Religion, The Real Matrix, the book based on African spirituality and mythology from ancient Kemet or Egypt. Written by author Heru Ifangbemi, the book shows that all Western religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam plagiarized from African spiritual systems to come up with their religions. Buy the book on Amazon. Link is in the description box. Let's go. How to be a successful black man. A book written by Dr. Daniel LaRoche. It's an easy read and a great book for families, kids, grandkids, nieces, and nephews to help give pearls for success. Available for purchase online on Amazon and more. I got mine. Go get yours. Link is in the description. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and here at Viral Hip Hop News. Go ahead and hit that like button. Smash that notification bell. And if you're not subscribed to Viral Hip Hop News, ladies and gentlemen, what are you waiting for? Subscribe right now to the brand. Appreciate each and every one of y'all. And let's get to work. All right, the brother that we're interviewing that you see right here, his name is Ramir Sadaway. Now, if you don't know that name, I'm sure you will know and heard the news about Jay-Z's alleged son in new court documents asking him for a paternity test. Well, that alleged son is none other than our brother right here, Ramir Sadaway. Cool dude. Got an opportunity to chop it up with him numerous times. Was even talking about linking up in person, doing some music, doing some various things. Good brother, like I said, and hopefully we still get the opportunity to meet him in the flesh and, and do some things because he's not too far from us. But anyway, we did this interview in late 2021, early 2022. And it came to my cousin and I surprised that information about Ramirez started come, becoming public and really popularized as of late. Because we talked to him years ago. We highlighted a lot of the things that you're going to or that you have currently read if you haven't read it or, or, or you will currently hear it once you hear the interview. Went very in depth about the entire situation, about his mother's alleged relationship with Jay-Z, a lot of different things. We did a two-part series. You'll see both of them here today. One was by himself, and then the other one was with his advisor. I believe she's like a motherly figure to him now, Dr. Lily Coley. Appreciate her and her knowledge because she gives a wealth of knowledge as well. And they break down the situation between Ramir and his pursuit in finding out if Jay-Z is, in fact, his father. Enjoy the content. It's a part one and part two series. I thought about dropping them in series part one, part two. But like I said, we did this some time ago. So I just decided to kind of combine them both and, and put both into one. So enjoy the content. The first interview, we're together. The second interview, I, I had COVID, as crazy as that was, back in December of 2021. So I was in my home studio doing my thing. But nonetheless, we had a great interview. Hit that like button. Make sure that you comment on the video. Let me know what you think about what you hear. Very insightful stuff. Enjoy. Without further ado, let's hear Ramir Sadaway. Welcome to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. I'm your brother, old guy from Hip Hop News Uncensored, and sitting across from me is my co-host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and CEO of Viral Hip Hop News, and you're in the building for a very special edition of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. we got a special guest in the building. we got the brother, Ramir Sadaway, on the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. How you doing today, fam? What's up with y'all? What's up with everybody? What's up with everybody? Good, man. Happy to have you on the podcast this afternoon. Now, for the people who don't know who you are, won't you just won't you let them know who you are, brother? Go ahead and well, I'm here Saturday. Um, I'm Jay Z, alleged son. I'm gonna say that, and um, I just want the world to know. You know, there's been a lot going on, and you know, today we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little bit that y'all probably haven't heard on the internet, or you know, probably just haven't heard at all. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank, thanks for reaching out, you know what I mean, to the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. You reached out via email for sure the other day, and um, we covered the story. I don't know long ago it was, and um, we thought it was definitely intriguing. That's why we covered it. But um, you got something that you want to share with the audience today, so the floor is yours, uh, Ramir. Yeah, basically, I just want the world to know I am filing criminal charges against Sean Carter, aka Jay Z, and his lawyers. It's been going on for so long, and I don't know, you know, I haven't really did no interviews with nobody. I've been, you know, a regular family guy going to work every day, you know, taking care of my family. Just on everyday life, you know, I've been just staying to myself. I haven't been saying anything, but I just want the world to know I am filing criminal charges, and it's been so much going on with this case that, you know, they will never let get out, or I'm not going to say they will never let get out, but you, it's just things that y'all don't know. 
I'll probably look at it and be like, you know, I heard a lot of when I was looking at the comments, I saw the whole lot. This mm -hmm. guy crazy and he probably want 15 minutes of fame, but I just want the world to know I'm coming from my heart and I'm speaking from my heart. I just want y'all to know that everything is real. I'm telling y'all, it's nothing that I got to hide or, you know, my mom passed away two years ago, you know, and I'm, she passed the torch to me. I'm still left with it. And I just said, I'm, I'm, I will continue fighting. I just want that for everybody in the world. Not just for me, this, this is a bigger picture for the kids out there, whatever, whoever you looking for, your father or your mother. And you fully believe in that this fully, this, this, this picture all into it. Don't let nobody tell you nothing. If you fully believe in that, just go for it. Like, you know, courts and all that. Don't let the courts, you know, Cause the courts are like the courts say they there to help you, but trust me, I didn't, I didn't been through a crazy 10, 11 years that wow. it, it's been a fight. It's been a fight. And you know, this not to bash any, not to bash anybody or nothing like that. I know never looking for no handouts or nothing like that. I'm just want the world to know it's real, it's real shit that's going on. Excuse my language. It's real yeah. things that's going on out in the world. And y'all really got to open your eyes. Y'all look at people and say, you know, this guy's looking for this and all that, but y'all don't look at it from the other, the other way around. Like, what if this was you? You wanted to know who your parents was or you was going to court and they was treating you like you was nothing. This is for anybody around the world. I just want y'all to fully fight for what you believe in. And that's, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what it is. Do us a favor and do the people a favor and take us back to your childhood. Take us back to you living with your mom and your, your memories of who your father was. Well, um, taking y'all back from my childhood, I had a very great childhood with my family. You know, the person who took care of me, I, you know, I appreciate that he did everything he could. It was, it was, it was my father figure, you know, and exactly. my family always was supportive. We we never, I, we, we wasn't no type of family just to, you know, not, not look at if somebody was there to help me out and be a father figure for me. My family was all for it. So it just, as I was growing up, my mom always, my mom always told me, my mom always gave me a hint that my father wasn't my father. And she told me exactly who my father was. I was a kid. So, you know, I really can't go into farther details because I was young at the time. But as I got older, you know, as I got to eight, nine, 10, 11, and my mom continued to say the same name. It was never no other name except for my father. And the person she believed who my father was, you know, Sean Carter. So, and uh, that's when I, it was never no make believe. Then that's, that's why I said I be me and my mom sat and had so many talks. Like I sat and talked to my mom, like, mom, you know, this is, this, this, this could do, this, this could kill us if we go out there and you know how the world is. They, they, most people probably wouldn't believe you mom, you know, but just my mom looking in my eyes and telling me that, for a fact, I believe this person is your father, and I'm telling you this, right? And it was nothing. My mom wasn't a liar. She was a hard worker. She took care of me and my brother. She she did everything for us. My mom was there for us. It was it was. My mom wasn't crazy. She wasn't out looking for no money, no checks, and none of that. We never asked for anything. But I I feel that if you go in the courtroom, you deserve to get fair due process. That's anybody in the world. And once you go in there and you facing somebody, you know with a lot of more income than you know. Uh, we, we all know this, they look at you like you crazy. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people looking for their mothers and fathers that's probably celebrities. And how mm -hmm. how are we gonna tell them that's not their moms and dads if we don't know? Like, you do, it's so much that they, they human, we all human, you know? We all human, things happen. He wasn't always rich, he wasn't, he wasn't always famous. We all we all come from somewhere, so we we all just got open our eyes with that. We all we all mm -hmm. like we all just got open our eyes, and for the people who know me, they know me. I'm a hard work. I work every day. I'm working now, like, and I've been chilling off of my music, but I got things coming up in my music because I, I had to focus on me. I had to really focus on me and my family and my kids because I want to leave them, son. I don't want to show. I want to show my kids. I give. I give them everything. I don't care if, if anybody ever said to me that I had a possibility to have another child out somewhere, I would I would take it. Right. No problems, no questions asked. And I understand that's that's just not everybody, everybody not me. But at the same time, like you just gotta, if you didn't think for a second, like, you know, this couldn't have no possibility. Why, 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 is, this, why is this not over with? Why is we dragging this out for so many years? 
right, in the world, half of the world, and people, half of people don't even know what's going on. They just look at me and say, hey, you Jay-Z son or you you a Jay-Z alleged son. And I'm I'm going to forever be stuck with that because we would never know. And that's and that's this. I, I would say it's not fair to me, but at the same time, that's not fair to nobody in the world who doesn't know their parents and they parents just don't. Well, anyone that just don't want to take the test, just to, just to truly find out that that's not fair. That's, that's really. And I believe our justice system should be really pushing on that because it's not just one person's fault. It's, 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 it's a lot of people's fault. It's our justice system. That's it's felon us. It's felon us. And we 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 can't just sit and continue to let them do what they want. That's why I'm continuing to fight. I will fight this. Like I'm fighting, and it's not just because Jay Z. And it's not. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to do with. Don't let people walk over you. You can't be walked over, and just and sit there and just hope for a star to come down. No, you have to fight. You really do. Now now take us back to 2011, because supposedly, you know, well not supposedly, this is you know a record that happened. Your mom, you know, her living boyfriend, you, you thought that he was the father originally. It was a DNA test that went down and he, you figured out that your mom's living boyfriend wasn't the father. T t take a, tell us that and then go to the other side and tell us what your mother told you about meeting up with Jay-Z and obviously having intercourse. Hold on. Yeah, they were, um, at that time, I think they, my mom and Jay-Z, I think they were both mine, as you know, Kids is this robber mode. My my dad, not Jay Z. My my pop, they was both minors. So it's like she told me, she told me, and I didn't really know how to take it honestly because you know this was a person that was around, and yeah. honestly, I think Ray, you know, raised me. I got respect for him to the fullest. Like I respect to him to the fullest. He did everything a dad should do, and that's why I respect that man. And I don't take nothing from him. And my mom. I just, I really couldn't believe it. It's not like my mom lied to me or anything. It's just that I didn't know the other person. I never knew who Sean Corey Carter was or Jay-Z until I got older. I saw him on videos and all that and heard plenty of things about him from not just my mom, my aunts. And, you know, they, they but we, we, we didn't know this man. So I continued to go on with my life. You know, I really, I really didn't look at it like I was a kid. You know, I really wasn't looking at it no type of way until I got older and fully start to understand like my mom is serious. Like my mom is just something she's been telling me from a young age and this this is something that's not going to work because my mom is sitting down with me and having fully conversations like, Rod, this is your father. Like I really want you to believe me and I'm telling you the truth. And my mom never lied to me. So I'm like, what, what am I going through so much? Like the in my mind to create something else than other than what my mom telling me because I was every time she said that I just was it's like right now I do see this man on TV and all that I don't like but it's, it's, it's basically I didn't just want nothing to do with it honestly I don't want nothing to do with it and mm -hmm. I just I just start to grow I just started to grow and I said it was something important it's really something important to her because my mom now my mom getting sick and She's saying the same thing, and she's like, Rob, I really want you to know who your father is. Like, we right. really got to push this. Like, now, now I'm on, like, all right, I'm like, Mom, well, let's push it, Mom. If you fully believe this, like, let's go full throttle. Let's, I'm right behind you, Mom. You ain't never lied to me. You ain't never showed me nothing different. You've been saying this all my life. So, Mom, I, whatever, whatever you need me to do, I'm there for you. This, 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 let's, let's go. So, and we still in it. Like, you know, it, it's been, it's been, once we started, we've just been going forward. It's no, it's no turning back around. Talk about how that door opened. All right, you, you, your mother tells you that Sean Carter is allegedly your father, also known as Jay Z. What's the next step from there? Where did y'all go from there? Well, my mom start. She went to court, and she said basically, when she filed time, she said basically they threw it out. They basically threw it. Out. I don't know what exactly was filed, but it should be still in, the, I guess, the public records. But my mom filed something, and I guess they threw it out. Or looked at her like she was crazy and she tried to go back again but this time she went back with my god mom she had a little more help this time so oh yeah when i came to new jersey when i came to new jersey and my god mom she she helped out a lot she took everything back to court and that's how everything really got back open but my mom did go to court and file something i just honestly don't know you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I really wouldn't know what she would, what she filed or what she even said to them. But she did go to court. 
Okay, now let's take take us back to the criminal criminal case. You guys are filing a criminal case. Um, things such as perjury, obstruction of justice. What is uh, Jay Z already came out and pretty much admitted? He said that this is ridiculous. It's a claim. It's not true. So what's the point of the criminal case? Can you break that down for us? Yes, this was all, uh, all through through this 10, 11 years, everything that they had going on, like far as perjury, obstructions to justice, um, they fraud. I, I believe it was a lot going on in the courtrooms. And I just need someone higher. Like I, that's, I just I just really want my case to be really looked at because I honestly believe that it was a, this, it's a lot of things that wasn't that wasn't touched on. You know, I believe they looked at the case and and f then fully go through it, honestly. Mm. I believe that they didn't like, they treated me, I didn't get fair due process. I really I really believe that. They looked at me like, I don't know how they looked at me, it was if it was money hungry, but they gotta understand, I didn't start this. I'm just was a party to this. My mom and everybody started, I was just a party to this, but they, I guess when you coming for a high person like Jay-Z, of course, a lot of people gonna look at you like you coming for his money. We never asked for no money. I never asked for no money, never. I never asked this man for no money. I, did nothing have been generous. Like I honestly, and I love it, love his music. Like you know, I'm honestly a fan. Like I have nothing against him. That's what I want the world to know. It's nothing. I don't have nothing to say about that man. I really applaud that man for what he doing with his with, with his with his family and everything he got going on. This this wasn't about me just coming at him and bashing him. Well, I I I, I want to know the truth. Like, and I believe that every every person should know the truth. Like if especially if you. I'm standing on what I believe in, and that's it. It's no, it's, it's not against nobody. I don't want to bring up no hard feelings. I'm not slandering nobody. It's not, it's not, it's not about that. But we all black, so when we see people on TV and they on um, Black Life movements and you know doing all this spectacular stuff, then you know you got a whole, whole lot of things going on behind the scene. You just got to be true to yourself. Like you can't just don't fake the funk. Like it's probably it's probably a lot of people who came at Jay Z and said, "I'm your son, I'm your daughter, I'm your daughter." But why why shouldn't he have to take that? Why why shouldn't he have to prove? Like everybody want me to prove prove something, but why Jay Z don't have to prove nothing? He just can just brush everything to the side. That's basically showing people in the world if you got money or if you got basically money. If you got money or you hired than other, but everybody else don't mean nothing. Like so, you basically telling me. Since this man got millions, he don't have to say nothing in court. He don't. He can just put his signature on everything and just walk past. Is that is that fair to people? Is that fair to the? That's. It's I, not. I honestly don't think that's fair. I honestly, and I wouldn't want that for nobody. That's all I'm saying. Let me let me play the other side real quick because you're right. It's not fair, but at the same time, people in success, and I think we all agree to disagree, or all agree that. Sometimes men and women in high situations fall into situations where people claim to have children with them and things like that mm -hmm. and with no proof. So yeah, do you have any like it was there ever anything to make you know if, like for a fact, oh, this really happened? Like, whoa, my mother did know Sean Carter. This could have happened. And did you present any of that in court? And how was that received if you did? Yes, basically, I wouldn't like because I wasn't there. I wouldn't. But I only believe what my mom told me. I told them they could put this on lie detector tests, whatever they need, you know, I will be willing to give up. It's no, I, I got nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. I, got, I, said, I got nothing to hide. My mom was still here. We told them the same thing. She could have put her on lie detector tests and anything they wanted to do, we would have sat down. We said we'd have sit downs or whatever y'all need because we wasn't hiding nothing. So I, I really believe my mom wouldn't put me out there and put herself out there to just look, you know, I would retard in front of the world if we could have been sat down and just got this over with it it only take five minutes it only take five minutes right so pretty much your mom's from reading the story before we got here your mom's claims that she met him in 1992 they had sex now i want to go back to one of the notes that you guys sent us about the man act yeah because according to that what you guys might be going after was your mom a minor yes, she gave her talk talk on that yeah my mom was around 15, I think, just turning 16. You know how teenagers is back in the days, you know, they like to move around. She had a couple older friends, you know. My mom loved to dance, was a great dancer, and she loved to sing. So 
all that music. The music light was her light, you know, when it when it came down to stuff like that, dancing and going to nice little clubs and seeing people perform and all that. She loved that type of stuff. So yeah, she just was, you know, man, man a teenager, you know, seeing people she liked, you know, introducing herself and you know, it's it's, it's, it's regular teenager stuff. I I just believe she just was having fun. You know, they was going out to clubs, meeting different people, and it happened how it happened. The Man Act. Um, do you know anything about that and why you guys possibly could be pursuing the Man Act in this particular case against Jay Z? The Because she was a minor, and basically we we she was a minor, and we fully is this is this another avenue? It's gotcha. a, another avenue, you know. What do you plan to move next on on your pursuit on getting Jay Z to provide um, a DNA test for you? How um how how are you and your team trying to promote or or get that to happen? See, right now we wouldn't we just focusing on the criminal charges and the civil right complaints, and I believe that everything would turn around. You know, uh, it's, it's it's a ripple effect, and I believe if we can you know hit certain things and we can get somebody of a higher status to fully look at my case, I, I believe it'll be all over because it's a lot of things that's sealed and people don't, you know, people wouldn't know about that I, I can't speak on. But I believe that if somebody from a higher status and really look at my files and everything that's been going on, I believe this will be over. The war with the attorney general's office, that's all I'm asking is for somebody from a higher standard is to look at the full case. Your, in your opinion, why do you think that because at one point, I think Jay-Z was engaged in this when they found out the age that she was a minor. I think that's when like the funny stuff began to happen, according to my research. Um, why do you think, do you think that's one of the main reasons why he doesn't want to answer it and just go to court? If he's not the father of this, you know, take the test and get it over, push, move forward. Right. I, uh, I believe it could be. I honestly wouldn't know because I'm not um, Jay-Z, but mm -hmm. I believe it could, it, it could, it could have a a, a, a major effect of playing this. Now, what are you guys accusing his lawyers? Are you are you accusing his lawyers um, of doing anything shady? Yeah, of, of everything. Like you know, I, I and I and I can't fully say because you know I have to. We have to prove this in court. But they they've been doing a whole lot of. They didn't switch names on our files. They didn't fraud it to the court. And I believe. Once any lawyer come in there fraud and gets caught by a judge, everything else should be voided. So it's like we don't know what they what they telling the truth about because once you come into court and fraud under oath, like everything else should be voided after that because these these lawyers just I can I can say over the over the years they just been crazy and it's, it's just keep I'm just keep seeing different lawyers and different lawyers like so this man is understand he's really fighting it but like I'm I don't understand what is if it's nothing. If it's nothing to fight, why is you fighting it so hard? Like if 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 this if you really believe that this couldn't affect you or this couldn't do, I, I just I, I, don't, I honestly don't believe that he won't be fighting this for no reason. That's just it. I believe he's fighting it for a reason, and if he's if he's not, I, I wouldn't know. I really wouldn't. <clears throat> What are your um? You say you don't want money. You say this is for a bigger reason. What is that bigger reason? For all the kids around the world and anybody who's ever in court to get treated with fair due process. And if you're looking for your parents or anything in the world that you fully believe on, this just go forward with it. You gotta fight. You gotta fight for it. And it, this not just on fraternity or civil rights. It's just anything you believe in. Don't let nobody stop you from fully fighting this out, you know? Cause a lot of kids, are, um, it's a lot of kids that is missing fathers that really probably don't care because they probably wouldn't want to go through the court system. So they just live, they live, live their everyday life. And we're not saying that's good and all that, but I believe if you really want to know who your parents is, just, just, just fight for it, that's it. Right now, is there a case where, has he been served with the documents yet that you guys, um, are putting out or just still in the um, process, the criminal complaint? It's already done. Yeah, it's already been done. I believe, yeah, I believe they got it. Okay. So you're just waiting to hear back from um from Jay-Z at this point to see where they're going to move. And what if he, ne what if he never, ever 
the response, you're not able to track them down. Um, what do you do then? Have you ever? Uh, have you ever yeah. uh, it's the government, it's the prosecutors. It's the, I really wouldn't, I just, I guess, continue with my life. You know, everybody, I got to live. You know, I'm not going to. I'll just continue, but I I say that I just want to continue with my life, knowing that I did everything in my power, you know, to fight this, and that I just wasn't pushed aside. Is a is a situation to your to the best of your knowledge, um, to the is a situation like a, like a paternity case, a situation where like I could go and claim that someone's my dad and put in a file, and then we have a case, or is there more tangible, um? evidence and situations that have to go into that for this to see a court hearing and court case and things like that to your best of your knowledge. Like can anybody just go and say anybody's their parent or is there things that has to be put in place for this to see courts and, and um I believe I believe in that, people I, I, to provide DNA tests and things like that. I believe that anybody can go say that okay. if you believe in a person as your parent, you can try to bring them into court because you know, I did this with my the person I believe who really was my father and, and Mr. Jay Z, and you know, my my dad came in there, but a person took care of me with flying colors, you know, and got it over with. And the only other name was on that list was Sean Corey Carter. He just ain't, and I'm just believe he just ain't had to take it. Hey, I don't know, he didn't have to take it or he just didn't. But as I believe, that's just, you know, we need we need to fix that with our justice system because if this was anybody else, and you owe and we owe child support for our kids and all that, we'd have been in jail, you know. They'd had us in jail. It wouldn't have been too much money we could put down or disappear from these from these because it's a lot of people going through this that can't do right. what's going on right now. You know, a lot of people can't this, and I'm not saying because I don't fully don't have the proof that he's paying anybody or but I know crazy shit is going on. I really and I'm not dumb. I, you know, I can I can see that when I went to court, it's a whole lot of, you know, picking sides, basically. Cause they, cause he has money. I, I really see that they look at you when you don't have as much funds as the other person. They look at you as I mean, it's different. You get different lawyers and all types of stuff. It's, it's just, I understand. It's, it's, I guess it's just a money thing, honestly. Well, you guys you want the prosecutors or any prosecutor, main prosecutor, is to look at this and really look at the files. That's the most important part. Is need a prosecutor or anybody to fully look at this and really just tell me what they believe in. Like, you know, I like, you know, this is something that I'm going to forever have to live with. And just like y'all said, I'm, I might not never get an answer, but I just want the world to know that I did everything and I never stopped fighting. Like I never stopped fighting through none of these years just to fully know the truth. Like that's all I wanted to know was the truth. And I, that's it. Like, you know, I'm a regular guy. I really don't have too much, too much to say. You know, this is my first time. I'm really not a talking to person. It's, you know, I saw y'all and I appreciated the little segment y'all put out on me. I seen that uh, all everything I, I watched over online. Everybody, a couple people was bashing me, but I seen y'all keep y'all kept it solid, and I really commend y'all for that. Like, I, I really appreciate that, and y'all just really kept it solid and real. Y'all, you know, and that's that, that's all you can do. I'm just, a, I'm. I'm in the hood right now, like I'm not to say it like that, but I, I'm speaking from my heart. I mean, it's not, it's not written down. I don't got nothing that's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm speaking from my heart, and I just want y'all to know that it, it, this is not fake. It's, it's, it's a lot of shit that just be going on under the tables that people wouldn't know. And no, indeed, indeed, Brian. When we when we seen the story, and one thing we pride ourselves on is just being right down the middle. No personal feelings aside, we are huge fans of Jay Z. Mm -hmm. Love his music, love his artwork, love what he's doing out here. But at the same time, if there's things going on that may go against the grain and may not be as popular that we got to discuss, we will discuss it in a, you know what I mean, in a neutral manner. So you'll always get the, the platform to do that and do so. And at the end of the day, you just want the truth. You know, what I mean? we want to find. That's, that's and that's all that's all that yeah. anybody wants. That's what I'm saying. Is this was never about bashing or just trying to point the finger at somebody because, you know, I don't know that person. I'm pretty sure Jay-Z is a, a great guy. I'm pretty sure he got a lot of things. That he did for the, you know, just for a black man that I'm, I'm proud of. That's what's up. You know, he's a, he's a billionaire. He's taking care of his family, and everything else. You know, I commend him on that. So it wasn't about this coming at Jay Z, but I, I fully believe that if you go to any courtroom in the world, you should get fair due process, and you should, they should, they should 
work with you on the truth, you know, justice. Justice should be served. Like, it shouldn't just be, let's use different types of arguments to keep this under the table or under the wraps, because that's basically what our lawyers is going to continue to do for, for anything in the world. They, if they got things they can use to stay from out of the limelight, and we know it's, it's, it's we, we know it's type of laws like that to keep certain people from, I guess I wouldn't say sitting in jail or having to say or speak on anything, but we need to fix that in our court. We need to fix that in our courtroom. Right now, it was an allegation that came out as well. As people were saying that, um, correct this for me, that you were you just using this to further your music career. What do you say to those allegations? I would say that's just I won't say that's not true. I honestly haven't been doing music for a couple of years and I wouldn't say this whole case really had me on some depressed stuff, but it honestly I love music to death. This is something I've been doing before this case. You know, I always love music. It's in my blood. And it's just I honestly fell back and I do got things in the work, but I honestly fell back from the music because I really wanted to focus on myself. Like I'm not going to let somebody tell me what I can't do, but I honestly believed I, I wanted to work on myself before I even got back into the music. This was never about no music. Yeah, me chasing Jay-Z for 15 minutes of fame. What am I? Well, I'm not getting nothing out of that. That's the wrong person to play with. Honestly, I'm we going to be I'm not we we I'm not going to play with. That's it wasn't no person out of everybody in the industry. Jay-Z is not the person to go for or play with or even play with his name. For, for wanting to get blackballed with the music, you can get this playing with his name. You won't even get no type of shows. And I know that I knew that from coming into this. So it was never about no music. That's just something I do. I love music and I will never stop loving music. And for the people who support me, for me, if you want to listen to my music, you you can do that. But if you don't, I understand that, too. But it was never about no music. It was never about music. The back. How do you when you look? You said you were going through the comments to the videos. How do you react to the backlash of people saying you're trying to, like you said, get clout, trying to get money? I what mean, lied? Like, like, how do you deal with all that? They gonna always say that. Honestly, I just believe people. People gonna say what they want to say. A lot of people don't know. Just like I don't know. We don't know what the hell Jay Z did, and we don't know what the hell my mom did because we wasn't there. So it's like. Everybody can say whatever they want and judge you, but a lot of people don't even know me. And honestly, I'm a cool guy, cool collector guy. I'm just like anybody else. Love music, watch videos with the family, play semi-pro football, work every day. It's, it's, I'm a regular person, you know. And for the people who fully know me around the world, they know I'm just, you know, I stay to myself and I'm a pretty cool guy. I help anybody if I can. Like, it's not, and I'm going to continue to be me. It's just like, you know. I'm not, uh, this, this, this was just always just to find out the truth. And that's just, this was always just to find out the truth. If and the fraud on the court. Yeah, the fraud is the problem. And if that's, somehow, that's the only problem, the fraud, bro, and that's the only problem. They just been fraud and, and I just want somebody, that's what I'm saying. I just need a prosecutor or somebody just really to look at that and tell me different that I'm, that I'm not seeing what I am seeing. If somehow, some way, Maybe Jay Z sees it, a representative of his sees it. What would you want him to know? What words would you want Jay Z to hear from you? I just would want to say, you know, man, this is this is never, you know, a major influence, and I believe you should do the right thing. You know, this was never any negativity towards you or nothing like that. I always. Just wanted to know the truth, and I look at you as a role model. And it's not saying this such this changed anything, but you gotta do better, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot going on in the world, and only take celebrities. Not even just you. Only take celebrities or anybody in the world five minutes to tell the truth or see if if, if it's the truth or not, and even go from there. I'm not, you know, I don't want to. Put no pauses on his life. I don't want that man to receive any backlash from me for anything I'm saying. It's just, this is it's honestly coming from my heart. I don't know what else to say. Um, like, like I respect him to death. Respect everything he do, and I'm gonna continue to respect him. But I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do what I believe in too. And this is, and this is what I truly believe. 
appreciate you you coming on and appreciate you reaching out to us and coming on here and just kind of doing something you're not accustomed to doing and and just telling your truth and telling what you believe to be true, man. And we really hope on, on behalf of the platform that you find that truth, man, because you deserve it. You know what I'm saying? So any lasting remarks you want to give to the people, any, I don't know if you want people to follow you or anything like that, but the floor is yours, man. Appreciate your time. Yo, and then I really appreciate y'all for taking time out of y'all day and even sitting with me. I really I honestly appreciate that y'all like it. I, I see everything y'all do and I respect it and y'all just continue. I see a lot of more great things coming for y'all, man. Uh, it's nothing but blessings and for the world, you know, um, I'm going to continue to be Ramir Sadowitz. You know, I'm going to continue to do my music. I'm going to continue to fight and go forward with this. And if you really support me for me, and that's what I really want you to support me for it, me, just, you know, just, just stay by my side, man. I can promise you that I'm, I'm not a bad person and I fight for what I believe in and I continue to go forward. That's one thing. I will not stand and just sit there. I, I continue to go forward and I just want the world to do that. Just fight for what you believe in and don't let nobody tell you nothing different until you know the truth. We definitely appreciate you once again being on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. And hopefully you get some movement um, in that case that you guys got going. And um, he, you can find out if he's your father or not. Appreciate you, bro. Definitely. Bro. Appreciate I'm here. Yeah. on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. Salute, brother. Peace. Welcome to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. I'm your brother, old guy from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting across me is my co-host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and CEO of Viral Hip Hop Newsy in the building for a very special edition of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. And we got back for round two special guests in the building. We got Ramirez Satterwhite alongside with Dr. Lily Coley on the podcast. How you guys doing this afternoon? I'm good. How y'all doing? Great, guys. Thank you for coming back on the podcast. Ramir, we had you on a couple of days ago now, last week, and we dropped your interview with um well, uh, regarding you and the alleged accusations with Jay-Z being your father a couple of days ago. It's getting a hell of a response, man. I must say, you guys want to come back to round for round two, excuse me, to kind of clear up some things and make things clear for our audience who did watch the video. So, Dr. Lily Coley, this is why you are also here. If you don't mind um, introducing yourself, let the people know who you are and how you fit into this case. Got to make sure I unmute myself. Thank you guys for having me on today to just kind of bring a little bit more clarity for some of the things, as Ramirez said, he was younger at the time. Unfortunately, his mom is not here right now, but we have like affidavits and things of that nature. But my name is Dr. Lily M. Coley, and I'm basically from Philadelphia. I'm the godmother to Wanda Sadowate. Her son is Ramir Sadowate. And prior to me getting really into involved in this, uh, me and Wanda was in a spiritual relationship through church. I was her godmother when she since she was a child. And then as she got older, of course, you know, life borders different places and so forth and so on. Nonetheless, we came back together and uh, she had a baby, which was Ramir. And then I got involved with helping her with some circumstances with that situation in the Philadelphia courts. Um, I became the legal guardian eventually of Ramir only because his mother was getting sick and she thought she was going to pass away. And she said she wanted her son to know who his father was because uh, Ramir didn't have a good relationship or he had an OK relationship with the live in boyfriend. There was some circumstances there. I'm going to go through all the details. It wasn't good. Nonetheless, Wanda and I were very close. I met her in church. Uh, I would think I was about 19, was a Sunday school class, and a lot of things transpired from there. So I became, I was her godmother, and then I became the guardian, legal guardian of Ramir as a minor in the state of Pennsylvania, the state of New Jersey. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but I moved to New Jersey, and that's where I was. Nonetheless, that's how I got part of the picture. Wanda started this legal matter in Philadelphia, ran into some circumstances, got sick, thought she was not going to live. I came into the picture. She asked me to make sure her son, Ramir, was taken care of. Anything happened to her? And what are you going to tell a mother who's under those kind of distressed circumstances? And everything revolved from there. So I don't know if you want me to jump into the background of the case, but that's the introduction yes. of me as a person. I was an advocate, a godmother. And then, and I don't even have biological children of my own. <laughs> right. so no, well, we think you, you know, God, my, you treat, man, you treat everybody with the most love. So we, I definitely God. respect that and appreciate everything you do for me on an everyday basis, seriously. 
Thank you, no problem. So, and nonetheless, the, the way we got to this point was a legal finagle. I mean, I mm -hmm. didn't know what I was getting myself into. I thought we were just going to go clarify some stuff, get some things straight, and go on off into the sunset. I had no idea that the legal system was the way it was. So you guys let me know how far in you want me to go in terms right. of right now. I just wanted to give that introduction to say who, where, I, who, where I was from. I'm in New Jersey now. I was in New Jersey when I got Ramir as um, my legal child. Uh, mm -hmm. He was still a minor. He went to high school in New Jersey. He finished. Uh, he went to college in New Jersey. He was in my home. He was my mm -hmm. legal child. And I just carried out the wishes of his mom. And then one thing led to the next. Right. I want to just kind of go back because you said you were good friends with his mother for the people. Um, what did she tell you about, you know, the relationship, her relationship or whether it was a one night stand with Jay-Z? Can you give us that? Like, how did everything like to transpire to conceive Ramir? According to Ram, uh, his mother, Wanda, in the affidavits that are online, she met. Mr. Carter, uh, he, I guess he identified his name as Rock. And nonetheless, that was in 1992. It was 24th and Bolton in Philadelphia. It was related to some street circumstances. And I think you guys know what I mean. Uh, Wanda was a, a, she was a minor at the time. She met him through a young, a, a young lady by the name of Lakeisha. They were mutual friends and they went and did their things together um, on a few occasions. Uh, in the beginning, it was like Ramirez said prior, teenagers hanging out, doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, it moved on to something else. Um, nothing, nothing bigger because it didn't get that far. Nonetheless, uh, Wanda was underage, and as I said, and she was 24 from Bolton was where all this took place. And according to her and her affidavit, she met him, went back to New York with him. Um, she said she had protected sex, but the, uh, the condom broke, and one thing led to the next. Um, she didn't know how to contact him afterwards. She uh, told me that she um, was going to go back to New York, but her mother threatened her and said, if you go disappearing again, I'm going to get you or something to that effect. Nonetheless, uh, she said the next time she saw him again was on television because I think he didn't really get big until like later. Mm -hmm. But all this happened in Philadelphia, 24 from Bolton. The person that was with her was named Lakeisha. She wrote all of this on an affidavit, which is online. <laughs> she described everything. So all that information was taken to. Now, Wanda was in an abusive relationship, unfortunately, with Mr. Car with, with uh, uh, another young, the living boyfriend. And that was part of the reason why some of the delays took place and why I went to go help her in Pennsylvania because of the nature of the relationship. Gotcha. So you're saying that throughout the relationship that she had with her, um, her husband or her significant other at the time, that kind of. Pro or prolong the process of identifying Ramirez's true father. Correct. And yeah. that was an on and off again relationship. So they were high school <laughs> and he apparently was going around saying the kid wasn't his, blah, blah, blah. No offense to Ramirez. It's only what his mom said, what she wrote down. Nonetheless, they're young and all this is going on. And Wanda wanted to try to do what she supposed to have done the right, you know, trying to do the right thing. But they were both minors. And in Pennsylvania, no minor can consent to a, a paternity test or anything like that, or a paternity, rather. The, the, the parent of the minor must go on the birth certificate. So when that happened, it was illegal to start with. Right. So, okay, let's go to our current day. Let's bring it up to current. Um, mm -hmm. when, when, at what point did you first get involved? With this fraternity case what year what point did you get involved with this so in 2010 is when me and wanda reconnected by then ramir was in job court mm -hmm. and that's when she was telling me she needed some help with him and getting this closure with her son's father she said to me that she wanted to get the closure because she was sick she, she was going to make it and she went on to tell me about who the father was so i said well let's write him a love letter which we did mm -hmm. a love letter per se. So we wrote him a love letter and they responded before we even got to the court. They responded. Everything was kind of working the way it was supposed to. Then the attorneys got involved. Nonetheless, um, in that situation, Wanda was still in the driver's seat, so to speak, because we were still in Pennsylvania. And then as she got sicker, I took her son. 
I took him, I think, June of or May of 2011 to my home in New Jersey. And that's when I pursued the New Jersey courts for a paternity test and college support. Because by then, where I was getting older mm -hmm. and health insurance. That was it. And again, they were trying to make, they were trying to do what was in the best interest of Ramir, but unfortunately, um, I, I would say at least Mr. Carter was, but unfortunately his attorney started getting involved and Reed, Reed came with it. That's what it appeared, what was going on. Okay, let me ask you this. You said about 2008, she reached out, you guys wrote the love letter per se. To 2010, the it was, that was 2010, we wrote it, 2011. 2010, 2010 I'm sorry. Did, do you still guys have still have record of that response? I know it was 12 years ago now, but do you have that? All that stuff, the, the Philadelphia case, which we're mainly going to be talking about, is completely open. Mm -hmm. It's public. It's all there. So that information, there's links on the internet that shows um, documents and links of these types of things. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay. It went to um, the, the, in, the in-house attorney and I can't think of her name, but she was the baddest thing around during that time. And she was a good person. And she wanted to do right by Ramir because she had a son of her own. But um, somehow somebody got in his head and he left his heart. That's what I perceived. So when one thing led to the next, um, we do have that information because the stuff that started to fill up for those cases got intertwined because there was so much stuff going on with the attorneys. I mean, it really was the attorneys on both sides, even my own attorney that I hired mm -hmm. yeah. paid out good money. He went off and colluded. He got in the bed, so to speak, with the other side, which we don't need to go through now. <clears throat> but really, this whole legal system and how this stuff happens is uh, very um, egregious. It's crazy. It's a disgrace to uh, well. um, all the things that are going on in our system. Unmute yourself, Gus. All right. How does this how does this uh, turn from a fraternity case to a criminal case? Walk us through those steps and why you guys had to escalate it now to say, all right, we're going after this, this, and this, as opposed to going after this now. Right. So it started out as a fraternity case for me, having a minor in my home, going through that process of completing that loop, so to speak, with the college support, et cetera. Then Ramir, that was 2012 mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Then Ramir in 2013, he did what we call an inheritance case. Because in the state of New Jersey, at the age of 18, if a person has not had a conclusion of their parent, they can do so. So he had an inheritance case, which is a civil law case. I mean, you might have heard some things like that with Michael Jackson. It was a kind of few people came up and said, he, my daddy. And mm -hmm. uh, whatever, wherever court you go to, the court in some cases have an obligation to to follow it through. However, the bar for the inheritance case is a lot lower than it is for paternity. You guys know that by the nature of child support. They'll run you down, beat you down, and find you. But the inheritance case, not so much. Nonetheless, we got to that point. So right from the beginning, unfortunately, as you can see also, that's public information that in the 2012 case of the paternity case, it turned into what we perceive as an alleged fraud case because misrepresentation of the person's addresses and jurisdiction was presented by the attorneys. Mm -hmm. From there, everything messed up. So each time we tried to go back to get that particular thing fixed or unravel that fraud, <laughs> new fraud occurred. So you had fraud on top of fraud on top of fraud. Somewhere in the mix there, the attorneys realized they were a kid in the candy store. And that's just my opinion. And they started making up what I call manufactured uh, allegations and things that just wasn't true. No proof, no nothing. But unfortunately, in the system, especially with family court, because that's a kangaroo court, it's kind of a fun, it's kind of a joke. Everybody ain't taking it too serious. But nonetheless, people's in there, and I'm in there with no kids, trying to figure out: Am I in the United States? But nonetheless, I was trying to do the right thing by the law because that's where I, that's how I was brought up to follow the law, do the law, and the law should protect you. Don't break it, just follow it. So nonetheless, that goes from there. And then the fraud kept just accumulating where when we submitted these things, this fraud, from the lower court to the higher court, and nothing happened, then it was our obligation to take it to the next place. 
Now, we had tried these certain types of criminal charges in the past, but they got blocked and stopped. Mm. Now that things are going the way it's going, there's an attorney general. People got files out there from the attorney general. We had three cases from that mm -hmm. that were open and inquiry. Um, so now we're at a place where those things that caused us egregious uh, circumstances and where we are right now, under the law, each time they keep doing something new, it kind of resets the statutory limitation. In addition to the fact that we believe there was fraud on the court, not just no due process, fraud on the court, and the court allowed it. So my problem, as I told Ramir, ain't about a person. I got a problem with the institution. You're right. Because I need to be able to go, and he needs to be able to go to any court and get mm -hmm. fair due process and be treated like what we need to be treated like. So in that case, um, my deceased mm -hmm. mother, who was in politics, made it very clear to us that you need to, like I said, follow the law, do what you're supposed to do, blah, 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 blah. So that's how we are where we are now in terms of the criminal pieces of what needs to be done. The attorneys have to be accountable. They are officers of the court. But when in the court, filed documents that weren't true, said things that weren't true in Philadelphia and New Jersey. So it started in Philadelphia, but it's definitely in both places. And that's where the criminal charges are. And we need, uh, we need the audience. We need the public's help to bring about awareness, not just for us, because there's about five, six other people that are part of this case indirectly or directly that have similar problems where this stuff is just, I mean, it stinks. You would never believe it. And then the fact that I'm coming in here with no kids and trying to do the right thing got tied up in this and it's just crazy. Nonetheless, here we are right now trying to get to a place where the attorney general calling out any attorney general over the whole United States to review the file. That's all we need. Review it. And when they review it, they'll see what we see, that there's a problem. And not just with ours, but other places, other people, so forth and so on. So that's where we are right now. The Attorney General, Department of Justice. And I think we also talked about, um, we went to the Civil Rights. Well, we've been everywhere. Yeah. We went to the Civil Rights Department asking them to uh, help with the Civil Rights stuff. Right. And then they I mean. If you don't get if you can't get civil rights in your state to file something, you they don't even want to file it, they just ignore it. So if it wasn't true or if it was like whatever they think, just go ahead and do what you're gonna do and let it let it flop. Right. But when you get things at a state level, that's a problem. You got a problem. And here I'm living in the state with properties. I had to submit to the state of New Jersey, but another person, another party didn't. And they got properties too. So there was a lot of things that happened that shouldn't have happened. And that's how we've gotten to this place. Um, Ramir took his a step further and filed it against different parties. Um, nonetheless, the attorney, it starts with the attorneys and then it goes to the parties who um, participated and initiated it. They aided and abetted in the fraud or fraud on the court. What is your overall goal? I know we asked Ramir this and he articulated himself. And this has been ongoing for well over a decade now. Um, so I assume it's closer. But what is your overall um, end game for what you're trying to do? That? The overall end game is to bring public awareness to the egregious behavior of things in the courtroom as it relates to certain parties. And we yeah. have submitted new legislation pro se and legal abuse act. So that if somebody finds themselves in a situation such as us, they don't have to be abused and be down. Right. Now they took this information, these attorneys and some of these people to tell you how they are. They thought they were going to take the fraud on top of the fraud on top of the fraud and then kind of use it against me and my property. Well, this is the very thing that stopped the whole process from going through is this jurisdiction problem. So you have people just taking fraud and they think that they can get away with it. And I think it has a lot to do with not just the color of your skin, but some, some other things. But at the end of the day, the end of the game is to try to bring awareness and to help other people who may be going through similar things as this 
that we know right know of in the family court and the civil court where there's blatant disregard for institution for the institution of the government. Why do we have it if we're not going to follow it? What is the point? I mean, I'm a citizen. I pay taxes. I got property. Why am I? Why am I stopping at the red light? You're trying to abide by something. So it, we either can be a part of the part that is corroding or be a part of the part that's helping. We're trying to be a part of the part that's helping. And like I said, the civil rights, the AG's office, we're trying to get them. We're calling them out. We need help in getting the AG's offices all over this country. Anybody. It, all we need is one. We got some of them that's working on it. We got some that actually sent us information. But we need somebody to actually to finish it through. We know they're busy and a lot's going on. But we get an attorney general's office to look at this file. Game is over. The game is over. So in your opinion, obviously this is opinion, not fact. Ramirez's mom at the time, according to multiple reports in you guys' story, was a minor at the time that Jay-Z, they conceived the baby with, allegedly with Jay-Z. Do you think that's the main reason why he doesn't want to put his hands on this because it'll come out that if it is his son, then, you know, he slept with the minor at that time, in your opinion? Absolutely. Yeah, that would make a normal man run. And there's some money things behind mm -hmm. that. There's a money stuff that goes on behind the scene with that. Because when you're in business and you do something that's unethical, there's ethical um, breaches if you will. So yeah, so that would make somebody who is a business person go the other way. But as so many people said, he's at a position that he can do a lot of things. So going back and forth with anyone is not in a, not in a non-positive way ain't good. If you have the ability to make a change and to set some boundaries or changes that can not just affect this, but a lot of other people that might be going similar, then that will be the way to go. But yeah, that's the reason, uh, that's one of the reasons I think, I also think that some of the stuff you may not even know about because the attorneys are thinking about their pockets. They don't yeah. know, you might not know everything that's going on. No, no, we, know we, something. we don't know. We really he knows don't some know. things that's going on, but he doesn't know everything. So. You, I'm sorry to cut you off, go ahead. You can go ahead. So do you think that, this, this, all this blame, like you, you said earlier, that this isn't an individual situation, this is an institutional problem. So, do you put all the blame, and Ramirez, you can answer this too, brother, on Jay Z himself, or do you think uh, that pieces of evidence on his doorstep? Yeah, we don't, we definitely don't put all of it. It's not really a point and finger thing. We just, we really point the finger at the justice system because we just look at it as when we went in there, they took us as a joke. And you know, we, we need somebody to be accountable for the for the actions, you know, and this is any justice system around the world. Like, you know, if you for the people, do the right thing by all people, not just by certain people. Now, do you think that if this was like anybody else, would it be this hard? Or do you guys think just because it's a you know a popular star, one of the biggest stars in pop culture, hip hop culture? why people are looking at you guys like like you said you're crazy like if it was just some yeah. guy on the street it could probably happen so do you guys think that honestly and i wouldn't i would i would, I would say from my from my point of view yeah but at the same time i can't speak for the world because i feel like if this is like i'm saying if this is anybody else and i'm speaking everybody around the world we gotta we gotta follow the law so if we had somebody coming after us saying that you know this is your child and we was running away from a DNA test, you know, we we might wind up in jail and all types of stuff, all, you know, bench warrants and all different types of things. But in all reality, that's not what it really is because certain people can just, obviously with money, can just get, get past that. And that's for a lot of people with money. We 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 all know around the world that if you got money, you're not just, you, you, we all the same, but yeah, you I have money, you know, you get you breaking, you getting to do a little more than what a, a regular person is doing. Right. It's it's just, it's so much more than paternity. Yeah. And there's no offense to Ramir. But the paternity thing is the last thing on my mind. The problem is with the system. They don't take us as a joke. I know they don't take me as a joke because we all we're still here. Right. But the problem is a lot of it is what can they get around when you have the law 
and the law is on your side and you're somebody might be what well, they trying to break it. What I've been taught is you keep bringing the law back. That's why we're still here. So at the end of the day is one of these things where when you deal with fraud, there's no way to get around it. But with the truth, that's why we're still here. But right. the question is how long we would want to go and what we're trying to get out of it. I believe that God is telling us and showing us to how to help better the system because I'm a system builder. And at the end of the day, I have properties. I have stake in the state that I live in. And therefore, there's something a little bit more deeper than just fly by night going to the courthouse because, you know, you know, they are trying to do stuff with your properties. I'm not going to go into that. But nonetheless, all this started from what we consider jurisdiction problems, jurisdiction of I having to submit to one place and they didn't. Ramirez was a whole nother circumstance because he dealt with an inheritance case. They did similar stuff in his case, but it was a little bit different in terms of the goal, the end goal. My thing was not just fair due process, but the system doing what the system is meant to do. And when you keep giving somebody the law and the truth, they can't get around that. And that's the problem. Ramir, I want to ask you a hypothetical question. Yep. Let's say that Jay-Z reaches out to you or one of his team members reach out to you and they want to settle. They want to hand you a lump sum of money, but he doesn't admit that he's your father. What is your response to that? My response is, I believe really one. Uh, Not your response. I wouldn't know what to say to that at this point. You know, I've been through a whole lot with this case. My mom passed away. So I, I, at this point is, I honestly feel like I just really want to know. You know, I, I will continue wanting to know. I wouldn't take the money. Honestly, I feel like I can get the money myself. Just keep working hard and doing what I got to do for myself and my family. I would just tell them that you know let's that's let's find a different way because i it's not about the money it was never about the money it was always about me just really wanting to know and is this you know i just is, is this son that's gonna stick with me forever you know i've been working hard and my mom been working hard and my godmom been working super hard and at this point you know we we you know we we letting the world know you know that's i always say continue to fight so at this point no i won't even take no money from you at all Right. Um, somebody left a comment that was like, and answer this if you can, that you did you have one of those an ancestral tests or whatever where you can like see if somehow like like cousins or cousins of, do you ever do anything like that to try to get a little closer to knowing who your father was? Yeah, we actually, we actually did something. I mean, we ain't going to speak on it. I ain't going to speak on it too much because I don't know how much me and me and my god mommy really really say we was going to talk about that but we did sign with um i would say lakeisha the one that was supposed to be jay-z alleged daughter too and i'm just going to leave it at that yeah that was blocked wow just around the time that ramir was about to do it some of that was blocked because the young lady who who had uh said the same thing i think you guys know who she is yeah, she reached out to him a year before. We got it all in documentation, and they were coming together to do a siblings test, and that got blocked. Yeah, so I, I want to say this: happened. I know our time is running out. There's so much bigger, more stuff, guys. We can do series if you want, because we want to try to really change the system. We really do. I want to make this system better. I'm not trying to just come on and talk because I could talk a long time ago, and I have a talking history of stuff that I've done in the past. But I'm not sure if you guys are aware um, that Ramir was shot at Damn. somewhere in September. Um, he was in a parking lot with other people near where he's at living now. And out of all the cars there, his was the only one shot up. So we believe that that was a nexus or a connection, I believe, between the case and what's going on because it was around the time. In addition to that, we've had people come to this, my home in the past. Driving on the grass. We have pe people knocking on the door at 4 o'clock in the morning. We've been through all of it. Mostly around the filing time. So this is a bigger picture than this. We want to try to make a difference with the Pro Se Act or the Legal Abuse Act. Bringing new legislation and trying to sit down at the table with the lawmakers to make a difference. In addition to the fact. Because, you know, like you said before, Mr. Carter might not never do anything. And I'm sure he probably won't. But it ain't about him. This is about the system. 
the system allowing things to happen that were very agreed and put our lives at stake in some regards. So I just wanted to say that and that's what another reason why we were still going to the criminal stuff for the second time. This time the prosecutor's office locally did get involved, but everything is slow, slow moving and things are happening and you know, it's, a, it's corruption going on all over. But at the end of the day, if we get the public to help us out with their local persons and local support, that will change the game. That would be a game changer. I want to ask, ask this question to um, Dr. Coley. Um, you know, Ramirez's mother was your friend. And no disrespect, I, I, I've got to ask this question to be responsible. Is there any chance that your friend possibly, do you ever have the, the inclination that your friend possibly could have not lied, but maybe there's a possibility that Ramirez's dad is some someone other than Jay-Z? Did it ever oh, come to your mind? Of course, of course. There's always that 1% chance. That's mm -hmm. why this case has never been about paternity. Mm -hmm. It's about this you being able to go into court, whether you win or lose, and get fair due process. If we go into court, get fair due process, and we he does what he needs to do, because we could have wrote something, what were there disclosures? It's all kinds of things you could do. But at the end of the day, the law says in New Jersey that if the person who resists to take the test is presumed the father, that's what the law says. Here in New Jersey, anybody who don't want to do it and go away from doing it or prevents from doing it is presumed the father. So right now he's presumed the father. He's not even alleged. Wow. He's presumed the father. And Ramir has the option of whether or not he wants to say what he wants to say in that regard. I never got too much into the paternity after I saw what happened. I was trying to do the right thing by the kid at the time. At this point now, I see that it's bigger than that. So I had been trying to do it because other people said they went through similar stuff that was crazy. But Rami Wanda was not just my friend. Wanda was my goddaughter, literally. That she was my child. And I met her through Sunday school. We were very close. We went our separate ways when she went off to live with her mom. I didn't see her through college and all that. And somehow God brought us back together. And then she had all these circumstances with her child. And of course I helped her, so forth and so on. Um, this is, it is what it is. So I think one of the things you just got to remember is that, uh, this was a relationship that we had. Uh, she was, uh, my goddaughter, and then her godson was Ramir and it all came together as where it is at now. So we talked, we prayed, we talked, we prayed. I looked in her eyes. She looked in my eyes. We, it was, it was a journey, but we knew yeah. that getting Mr. Carter to do what he didn't want to do is something's totally different than me going in the court and not getting fair due process. That's all we wanted. And then, like I said, if you lose, you lose. At least it was fair. Right. Right. That's it. I'm you muted. You're muted. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. Um, you, you spoke earlier about how you um, tried to reach out to his alleged daughter about a year or so ago, and that got blocked. The, the interaction itself got blocked. Can you speak on who blocked it? Are y'all allowed to? We don't know. Um, she reached out to us. Okay. We, she reached out to us, and we didn't know whether it was true or not until we saw her ancestry, where she was able to use her mechanisms and family members to get what she needed. Yeah. And she, um, she reached out to us on Twitters and um, you know, Facebooks, and it just took me some time to read through the messages to, uh, to really see who she was. But she definitely reached out. Are there um other did you did you go to other platforms out there and did any platforms turn you down? Didn't they didn't want anything to do with the story? Not really. I think they, they don't want to talk don't. about no paternity. Because I don't want to talk about paternity. I'm done. Yeah, I really don't know. The platforms, I guess uh, I really want I can't speak for them. I really don't know. I guess I guess right. they did I, because right. Basically, in a nutshell, there were a lot of people that took the story, the legal part of it. You can do that Google. Uh, for the recent stuff, people mm -hmm. don't want to hear the same story. Right. They want to hear what's going on today. And what are you going to do about it? So that's where I'm at. And been there for a while. But at the end of the day, we had to go through the stuff of this other, this criminal process, which is the latest thing. So, yeah, there's some that want to do it, but you got to come on and talk about something else. 
They don't want to hear about no returning and somebody coming over here. They want to find out what are you going to do about it and where is it going? So that's where we've been for a while and trying to move. Yeah, I understand it's sympathetic. Like I said to Ramir, I get it. But you, when you're dealing with the public, you need to educate the public on where you are and what's going on. And then what are you going to do about it? Because like I said, I got properties. What it is. Mm -hmm. And other folk got properties. Mm -hmm. And I had to submit to the state of New Jersey and they didn't. And I live here. So I got a problem with that. So stuff like that is kind of crazy to me. Is somebody on your screen, Ramir? What'd you say? So I just saw somebody's fingers or something. Uh, you guys have any more questions? Yeah, I got I got one more question. Um, Ramir, are you scared for your life? Now, it's unfortunate that you were shot at. I'm glad that you were okay from that. Um, do you think that that was a situation where you were targeted? And if so, are you scared for your life? No, I'm, no, I'm not scared for my life. I mean, I, it, it was a scary situation. It was a scary situation, but you know, it's just unfortunate. You know, I'm from North Philadelphia. I'm not saying I got nothing to do with it, but I, I heard, I saw a gunshot. I heard gunshots and just saw crazy shit before. So, but it was, it was, it definitely was a scary situation because I never, you know, I never been through it. I don't, I barely come outside and I stay to myself. So it's like, you know. It was reported to the police. The FBI has it, and um, the prosecutor's office has it. My last question will be: um, Do you guys fear now more backlash, whether it be legal repercussions, any type of repercussions? Now that you're going after somebody who's so high on, you know, even a totem pole, do you fear like anything coming back on you guys? You know, you ready to deal with that? Uh, I honestly feel like people going. On honestly say what they want or you know honestly i can't we can't control the world you know we still gonna live our life day to day and continue to you know do what we have to do to succeed and go forward but that's it yeah criminal charges is public information the, the courts are public and um i think people kind of already know as a matter of fact some people were sending the stuff a long time ago and saying, why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do that? And some of the things that were done just never got materialized for whatever reason. So this is kind of an almost full circle, but at the end of the day, all the right people need know what they need to know. We had the same circumstance as the girls from the gymnastics team. When they uh, they said if one government person would have did their job, we wouldn't be in this situation. Well, we're, it's the same thing with us. If one government person would have did something, then we would have not been in this situation. We are so past paternity, we're into another land. And now we're into a place where the reality has set in even the more on what we should do and not do. So the backlash gonna come anyway, because that's the way that's the way they do. Yeah. But we I'm I, I'm from the biggest church in Philadelphia, and uh, you know, they already we got a legal clinic there, so it's not even a big thing. Well, and they kind of know who to mess with, but they gotta do what they gotta do. It's all like, from, from what I can see from the attorneys, it's mostly a dog and pony show. They just go through the process and see what you're going to do. Other than that, they haven't done anything. Right. Now, as far as, I'm going to go back a little bit and ask one more question to add on the address thing. You said about, you said it was a particular law about people in New Jersey. Did you guys find out exactly where he lived? Was it not New Jersey or how did that work? I wanted to ask that earlier. I forgot to. As far as the ad, did he have properties, you mean? Yes, yes. Sorry, the properties. Right. So if somebody has properties in the state, then the court can have jurisdiction over that person. Because when they have, when you have properties in the state, they, that means they have you. So that means mm -hmm. they can ask you to, re to respond to questions in a, in a uh, complaint. So I have, ad I have properties, other parties have properties. And I had to submit, but the other ones didn't. Mm, okay. So that's a problem right there. That's where the real problem, that's where the whole problem stands. And then in, in that journey, a whole lot of other um, crazy things that happened that just was unbelievable, which is why it led to where we are now, the greed and the problem that the, the persons did to cover up the cover up is sick. So the right people all know about what's going on and they already know everybody's lo everybody's looking. So, but at the end of the day, 
uh, some parties made a decision to take their criminal charges a step further beyond the attorneys because the attorneys have to pay a price for what they've done. They knew better and they didn't do better. In addition to the court, the court was in on it all the way. Not everybody, but some of them were. We right before your eyes. They did, in some cases, they didn't even hide it. Wow. So it's very sad to say, but it, unfortunately it happened. Absolutely. I don't know where Ramirez went, but I wanted to say it to him and on, on you as well on behalf of the platform. We definitely appreciate your time in the last couple of days that we've got to share with you guys and talk. And, hey, Ramirez back. I just wanted to say appreciate on behalf of the podcast. Appreciate your time and your perspective and just you put yourself out there amidst the criticisms and all the nonsense you're going to hear and just trying to find your truth, man. Like, just really hope you do, brother, whether it be on the side of Jay-Z being your dad or it doesn't. I just really hope you find your truth, man. And we honestly, I, we, we honestly appreciate you guys too, you know, for giving us a, actually you a time out of your day and giving us a platform to truly come up here and just talk and be real with the world and honestly you know, let y'all guys know a little bit about what we've been going through and, you know, just, just share our true feelings and life experience with y'all. So I, I honestly thank y'all, seriously. Oh, without a doubt, man. Thank you, guys, man. The platform is always open. You guys want to come on here, round three, round four, share new updates. Just feel free to hit our assistant up and uh, we'll open up the platform. Hey, y'all right over the bridge. We got to get y'all over there with us. You still in yeah, there? Yeah, we're in Turkey as well. We probably got to meet up sometime, man. Shoot some cool what y'all trying to do, man. Sure. And I think you guys are in Epsica. Are you in Epsica, New Jersey? No, A Carver. A Carver. I used to live down there. Yeah, got a property down, down there, A Carver. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yep. So y'all are all right here, and Ramirez in Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not far. No, at all. At all. We definitely get you out here next time, man. Chop it up, and like I said, hope you find everything you're looking for, and I hope the platforms and the brand can help you do so, man. Ramirez Saddleway and Dr. Lily Coley on the mm -hmm. podcast. Until next time, we appreciate y'all. Appreciate you guys. Thank God you, y'all, man. God bless y'all. Right. Thank you so much. All right. Take it easy. All, all right. right.